Welcome to this DDI CADcast What's New series. Today we're covering what's new in 2014 SOLIDWORKS Composer. I'm Michael Nolte. Here's a uh, quick list of the topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, the change between SOLIDWORKS Composer and 3D VIA Composer, so that occurred this past year. Uh, wrapping, one of the new features, auto hide annotations, coordinate labeling enhancement, uh, PMI cross highlight, interoperability. Uh, this is just the file uh, types that are uh, able to be imported now. Uh, we'll quickly cover the API changes and then we'll go over the uh, new changes to the system requirements. Let's go ahead and dive straight in here. So some of you may or may not know that uh, Dassault actually is the parent company of uh, 3D Via. Uh, they're the parent company of SOLIDWORKS uh, and also com uh, CATIA uh, of other companies. Uh, but uh, so one of the things that Dassault decided to do was actually switch um, the composer program from 3D Via over to SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so it changed all the development, the uh, tech support, all that falls under the SOLIDWORKS hat now. Uh, so they did make some minor changes in it. Uh, one of the things is uh, they do follow the same uh, service pack release cycle or fairly close to the SOLIDWORKS um, service pack release cycle. Uh, so I went to the help and about here. Uh, currently I'm showing uh, Service Pack 1 of 2014. Uh, Service Pack 2 I think is due shortly out for SOLIDWORKS and uh, Composer will probably follow suit fairly shortly if not at the same time. Uh, so they did do the rebranding. Uh, one of the other things though that they did is they also changed the, uh, the licensing. Uh, so if you're on standalone serial number you actually activate and transfer license just like you do in SOLIDWORKS from the help menu. Uh, if you're running a network version of Composer, um, it's actually also done with the Solid Network License Manager, uh, just exactly like SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so it's done in the, uh, the same format, so it makes it a lot easier to, to do licensing. Um, so be aware that uh, the licensing has changed. Uh, if you do have any questions, obviously give us a, a call on the DDI support tech line and we'll give you a hand there. Uh, I do want to uh, point another thing that changed on the SOLIDWORKS side of things. Uh, when you do a uh, file save as, um, we actually have the option for Composer. Well, let me point out something. So if we go into add-ins, and again this is if you're running SOLIDWORKS and Composer on the same machine. So I go add-ins, turn on the Composer add-in. Um, Oh, and Composer is part of the 2014 install, so if you have Composer and SOLIDWORKS, you just put in both serial numbers and installs it both. You don't have to do separate installs. Uh, they do also allow you to not install the uh, CATIA translator, so it actually speeds up the Composer install quite a bit. Uh, so I get the Composer uh, add-in turned on, go File, Save As. Uh, and when I go to uh, save it, uh, I can change my type to the Composer format right from here. Uh, notice there is no option button just yet. Uh, it does go off of the default document properties in Composer. So you want to get those things, those settings set correctly first time, and then start doing them, doing the save as directly from Composer or from SolidWorks. All right, so let's dive back into um, Composer here. All right, first one is uh, the wrap annotation text. This one's quite useful. Um, it's being used for the uh, annotation labels and callouts, so just annotation uh, labels and callouts. Uh, but if I select one of the labels over here in my properties, I'll go and undock that. I get an option to enable the wrap functionality, and then I get a wrap width that I can set. Uh, or you'll notice that there is a new handle in the upper corner there that I can actually drag and allow it to auto wrap there. So I can actually set this. Uh, you can also store this in the styles. So I could say I want all mine to only be 40 and then it'll force that to, to stay consistent throughout all my labels uh, that I create with a particular style there. All right, next option here is the uh, auto hide annotation when anchor is hidden. Okay, so what does that mean? It gives us uh, an extra auto hide. Uh, three different options. There's a disable, 
There's a standard and there's a advanced. Um, they do mention that the uh, advanced is time consuming, uh, so that option does slow it down. The advanced, what that one does is it actually allows, uh, if there's a, an associated item uh, to this particular part, then it'll auto hide uh, with that as well. Uh, so standard is kind of the straightforward. Let's go and set it to that one. Uh, and the idea behind it, let's see here. And get that to attach here. And then I'll go and set that to standard. There we go. So now if I actually grab that particular part, hide that actor, then that annotation will actually hide as well. Uh, if I come back and I show that particular actor, then that annotation shows up again. So that's essentially what that uh, that new item or the auto hide. So kind of handy that way you don't have to constantly go back and uh, show those and hide those. All right, next item, the co uh, coordinate label enhancement. Uh, so what that is, if we come in here and we add a uh, coordinate label, uh, so I'm going to just drop one of these in hit my escape to turn that off. Uh, when I select that particular label, um, I actually have the ability of adding text to it. Uh, so if I come down here to the uh, the text field, uh, currently it's set to none, but I could come in here and say uh, actor, uh, and then it'll actually bring in the name of the actor, or I also have access to the um, meta properties as well. Uh, so if you use those, uh, that might be handy. Again, coordinates, keep in mind that they do uh, attach to wherever you're pointing at. Uh, they're more of a, as a reference, uh, but it's a good way of kind of pinpointing, but now you can actually tell which part it's currently attached to. Um, you can also change which uh, level it's pulling from, so you can either do the part itself or the body itself, the subassembly or the top level, depending on what level you're diving into. Okay, next item is PMI cross highlight. All right, so to do this next one, uh, I need to switch back to SolidWorks, uh, and I'm going to turn off or turn on a um, some surface bodies here that I've created. Okay, I'm going to save that, and I'll save the assembly. And we're going to go and do an update. So I'm actually going to save out a um, an update file. This is kind of a, a different work workflow, but it works actually quite well. Uh, so I'm, rather than pulling the uh, SolidWorks assembly in Composer for an update, I'm actually just saving out an SMG file uh, from SolidWorks. All right, so we're going to let it finish doing that. And once it finishes, uh, we'll switch back to Composer, and then we'll actually pull that in and do an update. So again, PMI um, is a product manufacturing information. Uh, so it's essentially allowing more information as far as where those, those show up uh, in the particular model here. All right, so we're going to pull that update. And, and again, this is why we use Composer, so that we can pull those updates real easily. And I want to make sure that I import free faces because that's our surface bodies. Okay, and let's go and reset our views. Yeah. I caught myself in my own uh, hiccup there. So yeah, because I did the update, um, I don't know if you're aware, but yeah, default document properties, it was set to not import free faces. So <laughs> when I saved out that SMG, it didn't bring in the, the free faces. So I'm actually gonna go and do uh, an update with the SolidWorks assembly. But um, I guess it's handy to, to see that other uh, methodology. All right, so I'm gonna go and grab the entire motor and when I import, I do want to do the free faces there. Okay, and again, because I saved that SMG out the other way, it's not going to do the update that that way. So it's going to load SolidWorks in the background there and do our conversion. So the other workflow that I was going through, the 
reason that's kind of handy is you might be right in the middle of working on SOLIDWORKS assembly and then you might as well just spit out the SMG. But again, make sure you make your uh, default document properties uh, set up correctly. Otherwise, uh, it's going to do what it just did to me. All right, so this should be done in a moment. All right, there we go. We've got our uh, surface bodies. Okay, so that's those little red dis disks there. All right, so where this option shows up at is if we go um, File, Properties, and Document Properties, or you could also set in uh, Default Document Properties uh, if you're going to use it uh, every time. Uh, but you come down to the selection group and then there's the PMI cross um, highlight uh, so we actually have the ability of, of changing the, uh, the colors uh, for those particular items uh, in fact uh, you know what let me go and bring up the, uh, the help file here or the release note so you know where I'm pulling my information from uh, they've actually got a good example here um, one sec There we go. Um, so essentially, the, those surface bodies on the outside there, whether you want them uh, visible uh, or staying on top, uh, selected um, opacity, uh, or picking out a, a particular color there. So you actually have the option of changing what those are doing. Um, I, my surface bodies aren't actually intersecting, so it uh, makes it a little bit harder to, uh, to work with that. So let me see if I can get a scenario here. simplify this so my system can keep up with it and let's go and make those changes here so document properties um, let's go uncheck on that yeah, I don't have a, a good example but you kind of get the uh, the idea there all right let's flipping back to the um, PowerPoint here uh, so, uh, interoperability is essentially it's just saying what versions uh, you can now bring into Composer 2014. Uh, so we can do CATIA V5 uh, release uh, 23 uh, and of course SOLIDWORKS 2014 files. Um, the API stuff, um, if you do use the API to write to SOLIDWORKS uh, Composer, uh, there's four new calls. Uh, so uh, if you do uh, use that definitely take a look at the uh, release notes and you'll get some more information on that uh, last item is the system requirements so let's go and switch over to that all right so I'm gonna go um, support system requirements this is SOLIDWORKS.com and I'll go and do the SOLIDWORKS composer system requirements uh, and note that uh, the 2014 uh, doesn't support Vista or XP, so it's kind of following suit uh, with uh, SOLIDWORKS that we're not supporting Vista or XP. Uh, licensing also, uh, a lot of the uh, the older operating systems are getting dropped off uh, for the uh, support of the, the new versions. Um, as far as general requirements, they really haven't changed. Uh, again, they do still recommend a OpenGL uh, graphics card. Um, there is no list per se for Composer just yet, but uh, essentially any business professional or anything that lists uh, OpenGL acceleration capability uh, should work. For more CADcast topics, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ddicad or tech blog at ddicad.com forward slash tech center. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.